Next slide over here, we, you know, we talked a little bit about APT, mm -hmm. and uh, John, I guess uh, you found some information that uh, maybe you can tell us a little about right. it. <laughs> um, so uh, Symantec uh, was reporting on this particular story uh, about a threat called Dragonfly slash Energetic Bear, mm -hmm. uh, this APT group. And uh, it's an interesting one. We've kind of talked about APT actors before uh, a lot on the program. Most of them with respect to theft of intellectual property, espionage activity, mm -hmm. uh, intelligence gathering types of operations. This one was for the most part targeting different types of uh, infrastructure. If you, if you take a look at the types of things that they were targeting here, they're targeting, well, defense and aviation is one that we see all the time, but more so lately, they were targeting energy grid operators, electricity, electricity generation, petroleum pipelines, uh, and energy industrial control systems. That's the thing that really troubles me, mostly in US and Europe. It has a lot of similarities in some ways to Stuxnet with the ICS, uh, industrial control systems, mm -hmm. um, but probably not the same actor set here, I don't think. The tactics that they were using, very similar to what we've seen before. They spearfish uh, the targets that they want to get access to and mm -hmm. then try to interrogate their machines to figure out what kinds of systems they have uh, access to, what right. types of devices are they connected to that might be an industrial control system or software on there, mm -hmm. uh, things of that nature. They also saw them using watering hole attacks, which is not uncommon for APT groups, right. where they you know, have a watering hole for a site that these users might go to that might be energy related mm -hmm. or whatever in their business that they're part of. And then when they get there, it redirects them to an exploit kit, uh, which we see a lot with even tr traditional malware. Mm -hmm. But we've seen that a little bit more with APT, where they're using exploit kits as a means to get a, an infection to drop on there, and then they might you know, upgrade that infection to something a little bit more uh, useful uh, for mm -hmm. their purposes. The one really interesting thing about this one is that they were trojanize, trojanizing legitimate software for uh, three uh, vendors of ICS software. Hmm. Uh, so they were actually uh, able to uh, trojanize version of software up on various sites for these, these three particular manufacturers uh, so that they could kind of get uh, into the systems in that way. So they were able to actually get into the legitimate download sites associated with these vendors? Is From what I understand, yeah. Um, so that's pretty interesting that they were able to do that. Um, they're also thinking that, well, they're pretty sure this is coming out of Russia. They don't know if it's a state-sponsored activity. There's mm -hmm. speculation about that. Um, the, the other uh, couple of uh, artifacts here is that they use the Havix rat, uh, which is a rat that um, I don't know if we've talked about on the show before, but uh, it's been around for a while. It's another remote administration toolkit. Mm -hmm. And uh, it also goes by the name Backdoor Old Drea. And uh, there's another uh, tool that They'll also deploy maybe after have X rat called Carag Caragony, mm -hmm. uh, which also allows you to collect intelligence on the machine. It's a kind of a rat, but it's more of an intelligence gathering type of thing. And their C2 infrastructure, very much like what we've seen before, compromised servers, mostly web servers, some of those popular blogging types of software that mm -hmm. you can get and deploy on your web server. Uh, they found compromises for those and they've you know uh, used them as part of that. I did put up a slide here with some mitigation strategies. We talk about this all the time. The first thing I say, don't assign users uh, local admin privileges, which we talk about a lot. Mm -hmm. You know, have them log in as an unprivileged user if you can, because if, the, if they can compromise the machine uh, and have local admin privileges, it's really easy to escalate and start doing right. some domain level type yeah, things. It's, a, it's a one point. of the layers of security. First right. you control access to the system, and then within the system you control access to you know, aspects of the system, and it's all beyond that. So it's, you know, we should be working on layers of security in, in any of our security strategies. Right, and if you can't, if for some reason you can't restrict the local admin rights, um, uh, at least have the browser run, run with some very least privileges. Because mm -hmm. most of the, you know, as we mentioned, the watering hole attacks, they use exploit kits through the browser, try to you know, compromise the machine. So the least privilege that the browser can have, the less likely it'll be to, uh, able to infect the machine. Mm -hmm. And then really, it, in my opinion, the three important things here out of this slide is education. Educate your users on safe browsing habits. Educate them on how to open email safely. Mm -hmm. You know, don't open attachments or click on URLs from unknown sources when you get an email. Uh, think before you click or open. And also, you know, educate your users just in general on social engineering and uh, phishing techniques that are going around. Because, you know, there's other types of techniques, not necessarily with APT, but we talked about phone ones too, where people call you on the phone and say, oh, there's a problem with your machine. We detected there's, you know, 
uh, some kind of problem and they try to steer you to, to browse to a website and then they can take control of your machine that way too. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a couple other Yeah, I'd stick, a, I'd stick one in there. If you do find something that's suspicious, make sure you report it to folks in your organization that can assess whether others have received something similar because right. it, you know, oftentimes it is spear phishing, but they are still generally sending to more than one individual. There may be two or three, but uh, the opportunity to know that there's something suspect out there and investigate whether others have gotten it, uh, investigate whether it uh, has, has shown up and you know it has actually been followed out into uh, to or, or could have infected machines, is a very valuable valuable tip for security analysts like ourselves right. in investigating events like this. Absolutely. Um, and I, I guess the, you know, just to sum it all up, the reason this one maybe is a little bit more important than some other ones is they're kind of focused on an industrial control systems, specifically in the energy sector. Mm -hmm. And um, that, lend, while they haven't seen any type of, you know, bad behavior here, um, beyond the espionage aspects, there's a lot of potential for sabotage there. Yeah, and we don't know what the motivation is. Um, but uh, so that's one to kind of keep an eye on. And if you are in the energy sector, I would definitely mm -hmm. take a look at some of these reports. Uh, we have a couple of links that, we, that we'll have uh, on, the on the show here. And there's one uh, from Trend Micro, I believe it was, that actually has a really good analysis of uh, some of this stuff. So mm -hmm. one other thing I'd suggest, especially with the industrial control systems, is that they need to be you know, isolated from from the rest of your network. You don't want normal browsing from those. You don't want, uh, to, to the extent possible, you don't want folks to be able to reach them from their desktops, even on the corporate network. You know, these are, these are sensitive assets and they need to be protected as such. Yep, good point, Jim. And uh, I think we've probably talked about a similar topic related to point of sale systems in the past. That would be another example of that sort of thing. And, uh, you know, I think it, more generally, you know, we've we spent a lot of time talking about criminal activities, a little bit about APT. And as you pointed out earlier, John, it tends to have been traditionally thought about in terms of technology theft, mm -hmm. uh, intellectual property theft, that type of thing. But it is reasonable to expect that, you know, this, as much as we like to think about the world getting smaller and being global, there are still countries with interest in protecting themselves and you can expect that they're going to be investigating ways to help protect themselves and one way is to have an upper hand, the opportunity to be able to do sabotage in other countries if they, if they were to uh, take some type of military action against them or at least use it, at the very least, use it as a, uh, a, a diplomatic hammer. Bargaining <laughs> is there chip. such thing as a dipl <laughs> diplomatic hammer? Is that an oxymoron? But the, the point being is that we can expect that that sort of thing is going to take place. So for anybody that's managing systems that have uh, critical infrastructure roles, and I know we think of ourselves in that role as well, we need to be paying attention to uh, what types of things might be taking place, even though they have not been sort of mainstream, what, what things might be taking place to try to uh, gain control of systems or be able to manip manipulate systems in ways that uh, certainly might not have a good uh, monetary motivation, but might have a political motivation behind it. Right, right.